January used to be regarded as a dump month. This was a time when studios could burn off all of their less than cherished product, but in an era of event films and tentpoles, this attitude has changed. While the month used to be a dead zone in terms of quality, it's also become a fertile zone for studios to release genre product, with horror and lower budget action films often turning solid profits given that they are faced with little competition for those multiplex bucks. As such, Lionsgate has decided to release their latest Gerard Butler action flick, Plane, whose trailer quickly went viral back in the fall thanks to the clear-cut simplicity of the premise. It looks like the kind of movie that delivers exactly what it promises, and having caught the film myself, I can confirm that Plane is a pretty perfect example of a B-action movie done well. In it, Gerard Butler plays a disgraced pilot named Brody Torrance, who is reduced to working holiday runs out of Singapore after assaulting a drunken passenger who got rough with some flight attendants. It's New Year's Eve and he's set to fly what he thinks will be a milk run, only for the plane to inadvertently be guided into a storm, leading to an emergency landing on Jolo, a remote island in the Philippines ruled over by anti-government militias. When he goes looking for help, his passengers are taken hostage, and Brody quickly becomes determined to rescue them, or at least keep them alive, until they are extracted. Luckily, he has some unexpected help in Mike Coulter's Louis Gaspar, a convicted murderer who is being transported on the flight, but is set on redeeming himself by aiding Torrance and the passengers. In the past, Gerard Butler movies have typically done pretty well when they presented him as a man of action, with the Olympus' Fallen trilogy, Den of Thieves, and Greenland all doing pretty decent business. Plane is perfectly crafted to play to all of his strengths, with him playing a decent everyman who's maybe not the killing machine another action hero would be, but this makes him a more compelling lead. He's presented as a veteran, meaning he can handle himself, but he's the kind of lead a guy like Paul Newman, Steve McQueen, or Charlton Heston might have played in a 70s disaster movie. He's the guy that gets things done, but isn't the quintessential action hero. He's vulnerable, which makes him a nice alternative to guys like The Rock, Vin Diesel, or Jason Statham, all of whom are infamously unwilling to take their licks on screen. At one point in the movie, Butler gets into a vicious hand-to-hand -hand battle with a militia member, and he fights like a guy trying desperately to survive, rather than a superhero. The cool thing about a character like this is that even though you know deep down he'll be fine, he gets the crap kicked out of him over and over again and wins through ingenuity and courage rather than brawn. One also has to note the butler must be pretty secure in that he allows his younger co-star Mike Coulter to get a fair share of the heroics. Coulter is a lot brawnier than Butler is, and it's nice to see a guy like Gerard Butler allowing an up-and-comer like this their time to shine, and Coulter is terrific in the part. His Louis Gaspar is a mysterious killer with a noble streak, and I like the fact that he's presented as an unreservedly heroic character once the chaos starts. You never think he's going to betray Butler, you know he's a hero through and through. Were Plane to launch a mid-level franchise, and they were to do a sequel, a logical way to do it would be to focus on Coulter, with him shown to be a roving adventurer always one step ahead of the law. In addition to the two dynamic leads, Plane is extremely well directed by Jean-Francois Richet, who not only did the underrated Assault and Precinct 13 remake and the excellent Mel Gibson vehicle Bloodfather, but also a two-part French crime movie masterpiece called Mérine, which starred Vincent Cassel. Those two movies, Killer Instinct and Public Enemy No. 1, were my favorite films of 2008 and are dying to be discovered by action fans. He directs Plane in a taut, efficient way, keeping the pace tight and the action propulsive. It runs a lean 107 minutes, and the momentum never lets up for a second. The movie's premise is a good one, with it reminiscent not only of 70s disaster movies like Airport 1975, Skyjacked, and The Cassandra Crossing, but also a really cool horror thriller from the 30s called Five Came Back, which is a gem that's worth discovering too. The supporting cast is similarly efficient, with Tony Goldwyn as the airline fixer who's trying to extract the passengers, and it's a treat for us to see a corporate guy who's not presented as a complete sociopath and isn't trying to cover up the crash, despite the fact that the airline is in essence at fault. Danielle Pineda from the Cowboy Bebop show plays the head fret attendant, and it's a sign of the movie's efficiency and lack of cheese that there's no tacked-on romance between her and Butler. In the film, everyone has one goal only, to survive, and Plane is a solid throwback in that it's reminiscent of movies from the 90s, which didn't get bogged down in trying to be all things to all people. While Plane is definitely not a blockbuster tentpole, it's actually a whole lot more entertaining than most movies I've seen recently that had three to four times the budget. It's just a damn solid time at the movies, and it ranks as one of Butler's best all-around action movies. It's nice to see an old-school action star that still has the chops and lack of vanity to do these movies right. I give this one a solid 8 out of 10.